Hey everyone, Mr. Sujano here. In this video, we're talking about the PlayStation 2, Nintendo Switch, Raspberry Pi, Sega Saturn, as well as the PS3. Let's get started. All right, we'll kick things off here talking about PS2 emulation on Android with AetherSX2. Talworth, the developer of this app, has been extremely hard at work. AetherSX2 was just updated on the Play Store a few days ago. However, there seem to be some more changes on the way. The currently supported version of Aether SX2, which is available in the Play Store, is version 1481. However, the development builds go a little bit higher than that. The development builds aren't supported at all. They're experimental, things might be broken, things might not work as anticipated. But if you're chomping at the bit and you want to be on the cutting edge of things, you might want to try out an experimental build. Now currently, we've got patch notes up to Alpha 1608, and there is no guarantee that this stuff will make it into the stable version. It's experimental for a reason. We've gone over some of these in a previous video, but at a high level here, it seems there may be some performance improvements on the horizon. Although we've got patch notes up to version 1608, version 1615 is already out. I have no idea what's in this one. If you want to test it out, I'll leave a link to this in the description below. Feel free to test it out. But be warned, there is no support from these versions from the developer. These are experimental, things might not work as anticipated. On top of that, if you've got a Snapdragon processor with an Adreno GPU, you can always check out the Turnip version, which does install as a separate app altogether. It's got an orange cube instead of a blue one. It is a little bit interesting here, performance probably won't be better than the main version. Moving on, and we're talking about Sega Saturn emulation on Android with Yabus and Shiro 2. Yabus and Shiro 2 just got a brand new update. We talked about this a little bit the other week, but it just rolled out for Android. The new version here is version 1.8, and performance and compatibility is improved a little bit. There are a handful of new games that are now playable. There are two versions of Yabus and Shiro 2 on the Google Play Store. We've got the free version, which is supported by ads, and there's also a paid version. I do recommend checking out the free version first. You have to provide your own BIOS file as well as your own games. If you're happy with it, then maybe go into the paid version, but compatibility on this is, I would say it's still a ways off from being perfect. Next up, we're talking about Nintendo Switch emulation on Android with Skyline. Skyline has just got a brand new update. We've got some performance improvements as well as some bug fixes, and these ones are pretty big. Crypt of the Necromancer is now playable. Streets of Rage 4 now boots, but it does crash. A lot of people have reported Celeste up and running at 30 frames a second, and someone has it running at 60 frames a second. Someone got SteamWorld Dig 2 up and running at 60 frames a second. This person got WWE 2K18 to boot. I don't think it's playable, but it does boot up. Metroid Dread boots up but it's not currently playable and the title screen here for breath of the wild is now fixed the game is also not playable the list goes on here i'm not going to spend more time going over every individual game but i will leave a helpful link in the description below feel free to check it out even super mario odyssey looks a little bit better next up we're talking about the raspberry pi in a world of gpu and cpu shortages the raspberry pi has been hit as well it appears that scalpers are trying to pick up every single available Raspberry Pi and, well, sell it for profit. If we take a look at prices in the States, the Pi 4 with 8 gigs of RAM goes for 75 bucks, but good luck finding it at retail. On eBay, it's going for $189, a little bit of a premium here. At $189, I don't recommend picking up a Pi 4. That is a crazy price for it. Although it seems like a lot of people have been picking one up, this specific listing has 189 sold. Absolutely nuts. It's super unfortunate to see scalpers also picking up the Pi. So if you are trying to get a Raspberry Pi, you're either going to have to get lucky or you're going to have to wait quite a bit. Last up, we're talking about PlayStation 3 emulation on Android. I have done a few videos on this in the past, and my message in those is the exact same as it is right now. Feel free to check out those videos, though. At this point in time, there is no real PS3 emulator on Android. There is no legit PS3 Android emulator at all. Nothing out there is real, everything is fake, and nothing works. 
including this one here on the Play Store. This one was supposedly updated on March 8th. It does contain ads. Surprise, you download the emulator, you boot it up, you watch a few ads, they make some money and nothing works in the process. If there are any changes here or any breakthroughs about PS3 emulation on Android, I will be one of the first people to let you know. I will be extremely excited about it, but realistically here, don't expect anything anytime soon. It's probably quite a ways off, more than likely a number of years. So to sum things up here, if you do see a PS3 emulator out there, be extremely skeptical about it. Chances are, it's fake. But anyways, that is all I've got for you in this one. Straight to the point, all stuff and no fluff. Let me know your thoughts about anything we talked about today in the comments below, whether it was Aether SX2, Skyline, Yabashinshiro 2, the shortage in Raspberry Pis or even fake PS3 emulators if you want. Just let me know in the comments below. If you like this video, leave a like. If you didn't like this video, leave a like. Hit that subscribe button, check out my other videos. Don't tempt fate, save your state.